It's about living a meaningful life. But there was definitely that instant connection from the beginning. Happiness, it's within us. When we look after ourselves, then we can really show up as the best version of ourselves for everyone around us. We can always learn, we never stop learning. What was your time like on The Real Housewives of Melbourne? It was tumultuous and exciting. Hi, I'm Melina Reddy and welcome to Foreign Influence. <laughs> Drama. Controversy. <laughs> so, she was a driver for... Getting back to this physical track. Yeah. He's gonna love to design all that thing. People who trusted me with sharing their stories. Hey, I'm Alina Reddy and welcome to Foreign Influence. Today we are visiting a well-being expert, a yoga instructor and the real housewife of Melbourne, Cherry Di Petro Antonio. Let's see if she's home. Hello! Hello. How are you? Thank you so much for having us. Thank you so much for coming. You look amazing. All those yoga classes. Oh my goodness, I'm so jealous. You always You, you have to teach me You're how to, to stay young and beautiful. <laughs> Sherry, thank you so much for having us in your beautiful home. You're so welcome. Thanks for coming. You were born in UK. What are your fondest memories of your childhood? Oh my goodness, my fondest memories would be my family. So I've got a really big, close, extended family. So whenever I think about the UK, that's the first thing that comes to mind. Um, just being surrounded by siblings and cousins and aunts and uncles. Also, my grandparents were a huge part of my life. Family is so important and that's probably something that I miss the most about the UK. Well, in fact, it definitely is. That's number one, is that I do, I do miss my family. Which part of the UK are you from? I'm from Southampton, which is in Hampshire, so that's the south of England. It's about an hour and a bit out of London. It's actually a, a major port city. It's where the Titanic took Ooh. its maiden voyage. So that's, that's historical. Yes, it's, it's, it's <laughs> historical claim to fame, absolutely, yeah. What were your favourite things to do when you were little? I was really into performing arts. I did a lot of drama and singing and acting. I also did rhythmic gymnastics. So I was a busy kid. When I think back to my mum, I think, gosh, she was good. She really did just run me here, there and everywhere. Not just my mum, but also my stepdad as well. He was so great. I definitely was an active child with a close group of girlfriends as well. And what brought you to Australia? After I finished school, well, college, so at the age of 18, I went on a 12-month round-the-world trip with four girlfriends, and the first destination was actually Bali, and then we were coming on to Australia. But when I was in Bali, I met my now husband, after like three weeks. Oh my goodness. I know, and I was so young, like 18. Now I, I have an 18 and your year first old son. Destination away from home. I know. That's really interesting now because I have an 18 year old, and then I look at how young he is, and I think, oh my goodness me, I left the UK, and that was it. I, you know, I, well, I've been back, but I've never sort of lived there long term ever since then. When you met him, did you have that inkling feeling like this is it or is it something that developed from friendship into later relationship? Oh no, it was definitely romantic right from the beginning. 
<laughs> there was definitely that instant attraction and connection. No, I didn't think, oh, this is the guy I'm going to marry. Not at all. Uh, and I really wasn't that sort of girl. Like, I was all about my friends. I was all about my extracurricular activities, my performing arts. I loved all of that. Having a boyfriend was not a priority for me. I mean, I, you know, I had a few, but I didn't have any serious boyfriends. I didn't even see myself getting married or having children. So the fact that it ended up happening quite early was more of a surprise, to be honest, yeah. But there was definitely that instant connection from the beginning. What were your first impressions of Australia as a tourist? And yeah. then later on, when you came back to Australia to leave permanently, what were your impressions as a resident? Yeah. When I first came over here, as a tourist, the first place I went to was Perth. We didn't spend that long there. Unfortunately, we had a bad bout of weather. We probably didn't experience Perth in all its glory. From there, we went to Sydney. I love Sydney. I think Sydney's fabulous, really beautiful, an exciting city, and so picturesque. Love that. Love the beaches, love that sort of Aussie surfy lifestyle. That's very appealing. And that's what you picture being in the UK, watching Home and Away and Neighbours. <laughs> you do though, you, that's what you expect. And so when you see that in real life, that's very exciting. And then I was in the Gold Coast for quite a while, lived up there in a backpackers with all the girls. We were actually running a backpackers. So we ended up working in the backpackers. Ooh. Andre and I had stayed in contact. And then I did a trip down from Brisbane to Melbourne to come and stay with him for what was supposed to be a couple of weeks. But I ended up staying with him for months. And that was when, yeah, things started to get serious. I actually found it a bit challenging at first mm. but in Melbourne. Mm. And I think probably because I don't have roots here and I was still so young. Yeah, well, exactly. Yeah. And away from your family, such a big family, close-knit family. 100%. That was a challenge. I just became friends with Andre's friends, really. Once you start working and meeting your own people, that's so important to make your own connections. How did your parents react when you told them? Not very well. <laughs> When I told them that I was coming back to Australia, they said, no, you're not. No, you're not, young lady. You actually, you borrowed a lot of money from us when you were traveling because I ran out of money, as most young people do. And they said, so you need to pay off your debts and then you're going on to university. So that was always the plan. I went back to the UK. I went back to the job that I had working in a medical call center. Yeah. I, paid off my debts to my mom and yeah. dad, which I think they probably, I only paid about a third of what I really <laughs> owed them. They were pretty good. And then I came back. Sherry, I love your Instagram account. Thank there you. are so many useful tips that you have. And one post that stood out to me in particular is about your five ways for optimal well-being and wellness. Ah, okay, <laughs> yes. The five tips I think you're referring to were that number one is to include a variety of movement and exercise in your week. So always mixing it up. You don't want to always just be doing the same thing. So whether that's boxing, yoga, walking, whatever it may be, but keep the body guessing and also that way you're engaged and you don't get bored. Well, I love that idea, especially you're not suggesting for people to train for the Olympics, but just mixing things up. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm not an athlete. And yeah, so for me, it's definitely about enjoying what you're doing, because if you enjoy it, then you do more of it. Uh, the second one I would say is just to be really conscious of who you spend your time with and what you occupy your mind with. So who we surround ourselves with and even the books that we read and the TV programs that we watch really have a big impact on our well-being. Our brain has like a recording device. Mm -hmm. So whatever we hear, whatever we take in. We're storing yes. it. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Uh, thirdly, I would say don't make food the enemy. So often we make food the enemy, you know, labeling foods good and bad. I like to have a little bit of everything, unless obviously you're working with an allergy. Just 
try to have a balanced approach. I mean, we all know, generally speaking, the foods that are more nutritious and the ones that we should probably have less frequent. I personally love to listen to lots of inspiring podcasts. So again, that sort of ties in with just being mindful of what you occupy your mind with. But even if you're at home doing those boring things like the housework, switch on an inspiring podcast that you're learning something from while you do those mundane tasks. Mm -hmm. Self-education. Self-education, yeah. We can always learn. We never stop learning, right? And my final tip would be make sleep a priority. I think as mums, we get really tired. We spend so much of our time putting the kids first. And then often when we're tired, we tend to reach for those really sugary foods or unhealthy foods that don't ultimately make you feel fantastic. So going to bed early and getting more sleep can just really be the answer that you're looking for. The best way to recharge our batteries. Absolutely. What was your time like on the Real Housewives of Melbourne reality TV series? Oh, right. That was a, a very unique experience. It was tumultuous and exciting. There were parts of it that were really fabulous, like, and just getting to sort of dress up and wear, I like it's fun to look great. And especially as a yoga teacher, I tend to be pretty much in my leggings and trainers all the time. So that part of it I really enjoyed. Working with the producers and the directors, I really loved that. And the creative process was really interesting to me. The drama side of it, <laughs> not so much. That I sort of struggled more with. It wasn't great for my nervous system. <laughs> How did that come about? How were you invited? It happened in a couple of ways, actually. And to be honest with you, I really feel like I manifested that. I really genuinely do because I have wanted to work in television for a long time. And I just had this feeling of, hmm, maybe there's something in television, but with social connection. I had this sort of, just this feeling. I had an agent at the time because I was doing little bits and pieces and I did a few TVCs and they spoke to the producers. And then also somebody else contacted me who was friends with a casting director and asked me if I would be interested in being on the show. I'm just wondering, what do your family think about it, especially your kids? Oh my goodness. Well, when you say that, what do your family think about it? Do you know where my mind goes? So my mum and dad were out here the very first time when, this, when season one of The Real Housewives of Melbourne was on telly. And my stepdad said to me, because they'd never seen anything like it, and he said, oh, well, don't ever become like those ladies. <laughs> he didn't mean don't yeah. go on the show. Didn't think that was a possibility. Yeah. He meant don't ever act like them, Cherry. And we just sort of had a joke about it. So my mom and dad just found that just like, oh my gosh, just so funny. Yeah, hilarious. Yeah, the kids, they had mixed emotions as well. Mm. Also, I think you need to be sort of sensitive with the ages that they are at as well. Mm. You can get teased at school and you kind of, as a child, you just want to be normal and mm. to fit in and to go under the radar sometimes. You don't want your mum on telly crying and carrying on. Mm. On the whole, they were pretty good about it. My eldest son declined, he didn't want to be in it but the younger two made yeah. little cameos Andre my husband really supportive if you could pinpoint what you actually enjoyed the most out of this reality TV what do you think that is I probably learned a lot about myself with this experience I learned how important my lifestyle is to me in terms of keeping up with yoga, meditation, mindfulness, because when I embarked on that journey, all of that pretty much went out the window. And I can really see how that wasn't great for me. I'd also, just before we started filming, I'd injured my shoulder, so I wasn't actually practicing yoga oh, wow. much. I don't usually drink alcohol. I was also drinking <laughs> alcohol, so I know that that's not, that's not a good idea. So you learn lots about yourself. It's good to be on this journey of self-discovery, and I certainly discovered more about myself being on that show. And also that I'm quite a reactive person. I didn't realize how reactive I am. I think I tend to surround myself with people that make me 
me feel good and hopefully I make them feel good. Also, I've made some really lovely friendships out of it. So a couple of the girls I became really close to, no regrets. Oh, that's terrific. <laughs> How did you develop your passion for yoga? I feel like yoga finds you. I really do because so many people when you speak to them about how did you get into yoga, it usually comes to them or becomes more important to them when they're going through a difficult stage in their life. My mum actually practices yoga. I've got memories of her practicing yoga. She had books at home and but it wasn't something I was interested in, not at all. But maybe somehow you were observing her and yeah. it's sort of like yeah. subconsciously you stored that in. Absolutely. Yeah. I'd been doing little bits and pieces of yoga at gyms or going to the old class. I didn't really connect to it. It's just a, another way of moving your body. And then I think I went through a bit of a challenging stage in my life, just personally for me. I mean, nothing huge, but just a transitional stage in my life where I was just sort of trying to work out where do I fit in? And I hadn't taken the career path that I'd expected that I would have done. And I'd poured so much attention into the kids, which is so rewarding. But then I just felt like I needed more time for me. And so the more that I got interested in yoga, then I thought, you know what, I'm going to do a, a course. So I did a 12 month course. And at the time, I didn't really think I would teach. I thought it was just an opportunity to learn more about it, the philosophy and just to really dive in. But after about three weeks of the 12 month course, I just knew, I thought, no, I want to be a teacher. Share with us some philosophies about yoga. It originates from India and how wonderful to be on this path mm -hmm. where you're learning something that's just been handed down through so many generations and from teachers to students, from students to students. I mean, it's constantly evolving. I feel for me, yoga is a way of learning how to really connect to that inner contentment within and it's about living a meaningful life so it gives us these little tools to be able to really feel at peace from within because so often you think about okay i want to be happy and often we can say i will be happy when i'll be happy when i get that job i'll be happy when i lose these five kilos I'll be happy when I meet the person of my dreams, but really happiness, it's within us. The practice of yoga teaches us that. So this inner sense of peace and calm and- So yeah. staying in present moment. 100% yeah. is about being present and not sort of always reaching outside of ourselves. When I see students that have started the journey and the penny starts to drop and they're just like, oh yeah you know you get it and you just feel this such a shift in your energy and just understanding and being able to self-soothe because we are busy as human beings we live really busy lives it's a way of really down regulating calming the nervous system i just love yoga <laughs>
not long ago you started teaching yoga at a high school yes. what is that like yeah I've and been, boys as and well boys, yes i've been teaching a bit at schools recently so i've been teaching at a private school a boys school in melbourne and i'm loving it i just think it's fantastic it's not easy because well first of all they probably don't really want to do yoga um, especially the younger ones but when you sort of start to see that shift in them and that they start to enjoy it. And particularly, I find that when I get them into Shavasana at the end and you just watch them just so relaxed and comfortable in their own skin, that's really fulfilling for me to experience. Because in a yoga studio, people come there because they've made the conscious choice, I want to practice yoga. Whereas if you're working in a school or also corporate, so I do corporate work as well, and that can be quite similar where you kind of have to win them over. You know, yeah. they're not always sure, first of all. And yeah, then when you start to see them really getting something out of it, I find that just, yeah, really rewarding. And what is Shivasana? Oh, Shavasana. <laughs> See, I, sometimes you, as a yogi, you kind of just expect everyone speaks this language, this funny old language. Shavasana, it's what the whole point of yoga is, is to cease the fluctuations of the mind. We've all got a busy mind, right? And we're trying to still and quieten the mind. Jerry, you're involved in a lot of charity work. Please tell us about it. I think it's really important to do what you can to help other people. I have a favourite charity here in Melbourne, which is the St Kilda Mums. They're an amazing organisation. They are collecting different items to donate to women that are in challenging situations. Yeah. So often these women have sort of left their house in the middle of the night, maybe they're experiencing domestic abuse. They're all mums. For me, the connection that I felt with the St Kilda mums was that I know that I'm fortunate as a mum. I have a house, a, a lovely home. We never have to worry about where our next meal comes from. And then you think about some people who have nothing or they're leaving their home in the middle of the night fearing for their life and they don't even have a toothbrush or shampoo and conditioner, baby seats, prams, all those things. So the St Kilda mums do an amazing job where they receive donations and then rehome these items to ladies in need. Do you have any exciting project that you're working on right now? Well, I'm teaching lots at the moment. I'm teaching in quite a few different studios, which is fantastic, mm -hmm. keeping it really varied. I did contemplate opening a studio last year, so I was sort of going down that path. But then I realized that I don't really think that's for me. I'm somebody that likes to spread my wings and keep things varied. And I like to be able to say yes when different opportunities arise. Actually, next month, I'm a guest on a panel which is basically, I think it's an all-female crowd where we'll be discussing toxic relationships in the workplace and toxic friendships and how we basically aren't accepting that anymore. I love that idea of you on that panel. You will be amazing. They'll be so lucky to have you. Oh, I am looking forward to that too. And then also I'm doing an event with Amber Petty. She's putting together these incredible mm. events for nurses at the St Vincent's Hospital. Mm. The idea is about pumping blood back into the nursing industry. I mean, you think about these nurses that have worked so hard throughout mm. COVID and to really sort of focus on their mental health and well-being because yes. they're so often giving to other people. And you just think about what they would have experienced and the abuse they've experienced over the years. And, and I always think, oh my gosh, they're still wearing masks. I'm taking part in that where I'll talk about different tips for health and well-being and mental health. So yeah, so that's coming up soon as well. Do you travel much back to UK or how do you see your family members? My mum and dad are coming here in November. 
I was there last year and I'm about to book for next year. So I think next year we'll probably do quite a big trip. I'm thinking maybe Thailand on the way there, then to London, see the family, and then maybe go to either France or Spain. So that was something I did a lot as a child. I'm thinking it would be nice to take the kids on a similar holiday. They've never been to Spain either. Great to experience the different culture. Absolutely. They've and never been to Italy and my husband's family, well, his dad is Italian. So that's on the cards as well. I'd love to go to Italy and show the kids where their nonna is from. Well, Cherry, thank you so much for having us in your magnificent home and sharing all your news and updates. Oh, it's been an absolute pleasure. Mm -hmm. It's been so nice to have you, Elena. And yeah, I've just really enjoyed talking about all the things that I love. Yes! <laughs> oh, I have to stick the pinky out. Isn't it how you do it in England? Oh, in England, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs>